queen of listening skills is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is probably the, the oldest trick in the therapist's book. Um, and as far as we know, responsible for the vast majority of good things that actually happen in therapy is just the fact that a dedicated person is sitting in front, sitting in front of you, listening and saying back to you what you said to them. And somehow magic happens. It's not all that mysterious if you think about it, because when you are saying back to someone what they said to you, it becomes very clear that you've been paying a lot of attention, that you're not trying to change them or how they think, that you care about what's going on. And it gives them an opportunity to continue talking, because you're not trying to add information, you're not changing the direction of the conversation. You're letting them drive, you're letting them be in charge. And that, that is amazing, actually, to have someone like that to talk with when there's something that you need to say or you need to think about or you need to process. Okay? So that is, that is paraphrasing. When you're doing paraphrasing, we'll do a couple of exercises now, there are a couple of things that are good to remember. One is it's very, very simple. This is not the time to be smart. You need to sit back and listen and say it back. You don't need to analyze or figure out where it's coming from or how to solve it. You're not preparing to talk. Yeah? You're just listening. And then you just say it back. That's all. Super simple. Very low stress. It's only hard to do because we want to do more. But we don't need to. Really, the longer you can just paraphrase, if the other person keeps talking, keep paraphrasing. When they stop, we'll talk about what to do, right? But more often than not, they'll keep talking because it's so unusual to have someone who's really willing to let you talk and say whatever it is that you're wanting to talk about, okay? When the other person is talking, they'll talk about something. You can imagine a spotlight, that they're shining on something, maybe on this part of the room or this part of their lives or about them or about someone else, whatever. When you are paraphrasing, you want to make sure not to move the spotlight. You're only talking about whatever the spotlight is shining on without touching it, without moving it at all. The acronym that, that um, I use for this is a, a WIG. You want to do a, a WIG is an acronym for what I got. So you want to WIG back. They talk, you WIG. They talk, you WIG. You just say, it's, and it's really as simple as it sounds, right? So just remember, low stakes, easy, don't get cute, just say it back, don't interpret too much. That's okay? okay. A really good WIG will result in, the, in your partner saying, yeah, exactly, right? Like, you get me. And then they'll probably keep on talking, right? And when they say like, yeah, you get me, when they go like, yeah, exactly, it's as if like you won a point. And their charge went down by one point. Yeah? And so when com somebody comes to you with a big emotional charge, you want to collect as many points as you can before you try to contribute any content, right? The charge will go down, 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 and then they'll be ready for you to speak, which is, as you'll notice, the last set of skills that we'll talk about. Yes? Uh, were you wondering when paraphrasing kind of determining the emotional charge of a situation, when maybe wigging would be bad? Like, makes it seem like you're not in, is there a fine line there? Or is it... Do you have an example in mind? So when you're saying when paraphrasing might actually make it worse somehow? So evaluating the charge of the situation. So Ben was like, I just, like, I wanted to go to this food truck, but it was closed, and he might be unhappy about it. And then I say, like, oh, you wanted this food truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, on, but, uh, I mean, examples are difficult to think of in, in real time. So you, you're aiming for something non-trivial, but you're not sure whether or not it would be a good idea to wig. So, okay. So we, what we just did now was me wigging you. I didn't mean to like play a Jedi trick, but so I just <laughs> tried. No, really. So I just tried. <laughs> Nothing up my sleeves, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> No, really, the, the point is you, you really cannot go wrong when you are in good faith repeating what the other person said to make sure that you understand, unless it's so trivial that they'll get very annoyed <laughs> when you do that. Like, oh, I guess the food truck was closed. I just said that, dummy. Like a, but if, yeah, but if, you know, if somebody, what's, what's an example? So I, I, I also cannot think of one right now. But, I, yeah, I think if there's any kind of emotional charge that's, that's real and, and um, you think the other person might be upset, just check back. The, again, the mindset, remember way back from mindfulness, what, what's happening right now? Right? right now you're saying that 
the food truck was closed and that's like a bummer because you were looking forward to eating outside of whatever? He's like, yeah. Okay, very little to lose from, from doing wigs if there's any kind of a charge.